Hey, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We're excited to welcome Grayson Rose, who is the author of Trading for Dummies and Tensile Trading, the 10 Essential Stages of Stock Market Mastery. He's also the Vice President of Operations at StockCharts.com and the co-founder of Stock, Master, Stock Market Mastery. Mr. Rose, thanks for being here. The floor is yours. Thank you, Stephen. It is so great to be here with all of you. And I just got to say, I mean, from all of us at Stock Charts, from, uh, from myself on behalf of Stock Market Mastery, uh, just big, big fans of The Money Show. It is just such a, a thrill to be with you guys today. And we are going to have a ton of fun digging into the markets, digging into some charts, and digging into some of the strategies that I have been using for, for quite a long time. So uh, the topic of today's presentation, as you can see up there on the screen, is pinpointing the market's true leaders with what I like to call a multi-factor relative strength strategy. Now, we could also call this a top-down relative strength strategy, as you're going to see in the presentation. Uh, but what we're going to do is look at relative strength, look at how things are performing relative to a benchmark in a couple of new ways, something that you might not have seen before. So like I said, we're going to have a lot of fun on today's talk. Uh, we've got a ton of slides to fly through. We've got a lot to cover. So let's get right into it. Quick IP note here, just to throw that up on the screen. I want to thank Stephen for the uh, the quick background there, just to give you guys a sense of kind of who I am, what I've done, where I've come from. Uh, like Stephen said, I'm the Vice President of Operations at StockCharts.com, also the author of Trading for Dummies and Tensile Trading, uh, co-founder of StockMarketMastery.com, if you want to kind of follow some of my work outside of Stock Charts as well. Uh, and I studied economics and psychology in uh, in college at Swarthmore College back east, uh, which was a great sort of uh, you know segue into to the financial markets combining economics, combining psychology, at the end of the day, as investors, as traders, we are subject to our own psychology. And so combining uh, sort of that understanding of cognitive biases and the psychology that, that affects us as investors, as traders, that was a great background for me. Um, again, I'll, I'll throw this up really quick. Trading for Dummies, if you're interested in uh, sort of exploring some of my other work, that book, obviously available on Amazon and wherever you buy your, uh, your books. Uh, tensile trading, though, for me is really kind of the book that uh, that digs into my personal methodology in uh, much greater detail. Um, I wrote this with my uh, my father, my co-author there, Gaddis Rose, who's another money show presenter from the past. Gaddis has done a couple of these as well, but this really is the methodology that we have been trading and investing using uh, for for many many years. Gaddis for uh, for over thirty years now. And myself for uh, for well over a decade. Um, so the the book really kind of dives into what we call a ten stage roadmap for success. Uh, it is sort of soup to nuts, everything from start to finish. How we manage our own money as individual investors. Uh, this is not just trading decisions, but it's also investment decisions. It's portfolio structuring decisions. There's a ton there, and this book really does kind of encompass. Um, you know, our total approach to the market, the, uh, the, the market approach that Gaddis and I uh, both share and both use. So uh, definitely an interesting one. I always like to kind of put that up at the, uh, the start of presentations. A little bit of background on, uh, on tensile trading and sort of how you can learn more about some of the, the concepts and everything that we're going to talk about today, because most of this stuff is covered in that book, Tensile Trading. So another one that's available on Amazon, available in our stock charts store, store.stockcharts.com, if you're looking for that. Um, so uh, something interesting you might want to pick up, put on the uh, on the shelf there. Before we really dive into it, I also like to start these presentations with a little bit of background, a little bit of story and kind of how I got into this inter industry, how I got into this business and, uh, and kind of where I have come from as a trader, as an investor. So if you've heard me speak before, you might have heard this story, but um, the big pink highlighter, that's where this kind of all began with me. So as I just said there, my uh, my tensile trading co-author, Gaddis Rose, is my father. And Gaddis, for my whole life, has been a full-time stock trader and an individual investor, a true individual investor. So when I was a kid, when I was a young kid, and someone would say, hey, what's your dad do for a living? I would say, oh, he's a stock trader. So believe it or not, my dad, at the age of about 10, when I was about 10, my dad started teaching me about the financial markets. And for him, it was an interesting way to share his career, what he did for a living. For me, it was an interesting way to kind of learn more about the world out there as I was getting a little bit older and uh, you know, starting to get into uh, you know, classes and things that were talking about real world concepts and, uh, and all of that. Uh, so my sort of foray into stock charting and investing and trading, 
it all started with a big pink highlighter. Uh, my father actually was a teacher, so he would actually teach investment classes. And uh, what they would do back then was, you know, they had an overhead projector. And every week he would, uh, would bring these overhead projector slides to class and they would review charts. He had a, about 100 people in the class and they would go through dozens and dozens of charts and just draw trend lines and, and uh, annotations on these charts and discuss different opportunities that were out there in the market. As a teaching tool, my dad started teaching me about the stock market, but also for his students uh, as a teaching tool for them, he actually started bringing me to class and he would give me this big pink highlighter and he had taught me about trend. He had taught me about uptrends, downtrends, sideways trading ranges. And so the students would actually put up overhead projector slides. And I say students, they were actually, it was a continuing education class. So most of the students were, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old. They would put up these slides on the overhead projector and I would pull out my big pink highlighter and I would draw trend lines on those charts. So it was an interesting teaching tool for them because my dad's point was basically, hey, if my 10, 11, 12 year old son can draw trend lines on these charts and tell you what's going up and what's going down, then you as a highly educated lawyer or doctor or business person, you can do the same thing. So that big pink highlighter became you know, kind of my, uh, my first step into financial markets. But over time, I took more of an interest in kind of, you know, what those lines actually meant. I, you know, I was saying to dad, hey, I'm drawing these lines on these, uh, on these charts, but I, I don't really know what this stuff, what's MSFT? What, what is this stuff? So I was a little kid who liked to skateboard. I thought I looked a lot like this. I really looked more like that. But there was a company that I was obsessed with. It was called Zoomies. It was a, a company that I wanted to go buy skateboards at and, and shoes and sweatshirts and all that stuff. I was constantly, as a little kid, dragging my parents out to Zoomies to say, hey, can you buy me a new t-shirt? Can you buy me a new skateboard? Something like that. Zoomies, interestingly, went public when I was a kid. And so actually, the, uh, the sort of first step that I took into the stock market as a young kid, as about a 10-year-old kid, uh, my dad came in and said, hey, Zoomies is going public. You love Zoomies. I'm trying to teach you about the stock market. Let's open an account and buy some Zoomies together. So this actually was the first stock that I bought uh, with my dad. And we used it as kind of a teaching tool, bought Zoomies, and it actually turned into quite a nice little uptrend there for a little while, made some money off this stock. So it was an interesting sort of first jump into the markets, but it really hooked me. That's what, uh, what got me hooked on the markets, taking an interest in what dad did for a living learning about all this stuff as a young kid uh, and sort of diving into the markets from there. It has only grown from there. And now this has really kind of turned into my life, obviously, as a, as a you know, working at stock charts and being a technical analyst and a, a full-time individual investor as well. So my interest in the financial markets has only grown from there. But as I started learning more, I started digging into more charts, started taking more of an interest in what was happening out there in the markets. And so we started to have conversations like this. Here's a 100-year chart of the Dow. It is no secret that the long-term uptrend to markets is up. When you look at this chart, it has gone from the bottom left of this chart to the top right. Overall, markets trend higher. Markets move higher. The stock market moves higher. Now, there are periods like the Great Depression over there on the far left of this chart, obviously, that go down. There are periods like in the middle of this chart from the 60s to the 80s that are largely sideways, also from the uh, you know, early 2000s, kind of into 2010 when we bottomed, another sideways market there. But overall, the long-term direction of the market is up. As a young guy learning about the stock market, it didn't really take that much for me to look at this chart and say, hey, that's something that I want to be involved in. And as I got older and started learning more about markets, learning more about business, learning more about economics, it also didn't take that much for me to look at compound interest calculators and start to realize hey, if I start to get involved in this stuff when I'm younger, when I'm in my 20s, when I'm in my 30s, it's going to be really easy to do well over the long term. So I'm putting all this up on the screen and giving, giving you this background because it's important to kind of understand where I've come from. Two things come out of this. One, if we go back to that pink highlighter and that lesson of simple trend analysis, keeping it simple, just trying to understand the direction of price movements, that is still true for my approach today. I still have a very simple approach to the markets today because that's kind of where I started from. When I was a kid learning about the markets, it was all about this simple approach to trend identification. And that still holds true for my approach today. 
The other thing that's important is that I am a younger guy. I've gotten it started in this uh, in this business in this industry pretty early, and so for me, I do have this long term perspective because I have that luxury as a younger guy. So for me, I like to say that I've kind of redefined risk. Now, we typically think of risk, right, as the probability of losing money. We get into a trade, we get into investment and into a, a new investment, and we think I, this is a risky move because I could lose 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent, whatever it is. So typically, in sort of the standard view, risk is the probability of losing money. We worry about things like volatility, right? We, we worry about uh, charts going up and down. We worry about trades going against us and jostling us up and down and, and out of a trade, out of an investment. Uh, so volatility is kind of what we worry about because we're worried about losing money. Now, the solution to volatility is time. If we go back to that long-term chart of the Dow, we go back to that 100-year chart, we can see that ultimately volatility doesn't really matter if you have time on your side. Because again, the ultimate direction of the market is still up. We are still in a broad uptrend in the US stock market. So I like to say that the solution to volatility is time. Well, what that means is that if you have time, risk really kind of becomes something else. Risk becomes losing money that you could have had. So my guiding philosophy is that I can always just own VTI. Now, for those of you who are wondering, VTI is the Vanguard total stock market. It represents the total US stock market. It's still a cap weighted index. So it does favor the, uh, the mega caps, the, the big cap names in the, uh, in the total US market. But VTI does encompass the total US market. What's really interesting about VTI is that it is a huge, huge ETF. It is highly liquid. And most importantly, it is almost free. You can see down there, I've highlighted the expense ratio, three basis points on VTI. VTI, especially you know, in the face of uh, mutual funds and, and higher expense ETFs and even things like hedge funds, VTI is effectively three free. Three basis points is basically nothing when you're comparing it to 50 basis points or 100 basis points or even higher with some of those more risky, uh, risky opportunities out there in the market. So for me, over the long term, I can always just own VTI because I know that this fund has a historical performance, historical annual return over 10%. It's effectively free, as we've discussed, three basis points, basically nothing. For me, this is what I want to spend all my time in for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Because again, that long-term direction of the market is up. So I have this guiding philosophy, which is that I can always own VTI. It is incredibly easy to own VTI. And over the long run, over that long horizon, it's actually incredibly responsible to own VTI. Getting back to that kind of redefined risk concept, if I'm not owning VTI, if I'm owning something else and it underperforms VTI, that underperformance is what's truly risky because I sort of know the expected return of VTI, again, over 10, 20, 30 years. I know I can hold it over that time. And so I kind of redefine risk in my approach. Now, in my approach to the markets, as you'll, uh, you'll see in Tensile Trading, if you pick up a copy of that book, I have a couple of different what I call buckets to my portfolio. I've actually broken this down even a little bit further with a different one that I call super core. But in general, I have a core bucket in the portfolio and I have an explore bucket in the portfolio. The core is really where I'm going for kind of asset protection. That's the long-term stuff. That's the set it and forget it, the ride it out, the take advantage of long-term compounding kind of opportunities. So this core portfolio, this is where VTI fits in. The Explore portfolio is a smaller subset of my total portfolio, and that's where I'm going for growth. That's where I'm going for the opportunities that are going to make me some out, give me some outperformance, make me some money. These are the things that are going to beat VTI. This is kind of where my trading and the active management really comes in. So this is what we're going to focus on today. How do I find these opportunities out there that are going to beat VTI? Again, I've got that guiding philosophy, which is that I can always own VTI. And so the other guiding philosophy for me is that if I'm going to own something, it better be outperforming VTI, because if it's not, I should just go own VTI. Again, redefining risk, anything that's underperforming VTI, to me, that is true risk over the long term. So if I'm going to be in anything, I need it to be outperforming VTI. We do that using a concept called relative strength, which is what we're going to dig into today. 
And using this multi-factor relative strength approach, we can kind of take it to the next level. So from here, we're going to start to dig into the explore side of my portfolio, talk about how I'm finding these opportunities and talk about this multi-factor relative strength approach. Before we do that, I do want to talk about technical analysis. Now, I see myself as a blend of multiple things. I see myself as a blend of fundamental analysis, as a blend of technical analysis, and as a blend of what I call observational analysis, which is kind of stepping back from the charts, stepping back from the earnings reports and all that stuff, and just kind of thinking about the business world around you, thinking about products and services and goods and companies out there that you can invest in. So I like to blend all of those together. And in the, uh, the book, Tensile Trading, we talk about that <clears throat> as rational analysis. Ultimately, I don't wanna just be a technician. I don't wanna just be a fundamentalist. I don't wanna just buy companies that I think have interesting products. I wanna blend all of those together and kind of sit in the middle. I do lean towards the technicals more heavily and, uh, and the fundamental piece is definitely bigger for me than that observational piece. There's a Venn diagram that I kind of like to draw here with different bubbles and, uh, and different sizes. But still, technical analysis is kind of the, uh, the biggest component for me. I want to dive into this a little bit before we get into the full meat of the presentation, because there's a lot of confusion out there sometimes about what technical analysis really is. At its core, technical analysis is simply data visualization. It is a picture of prices that you're putting up on your screen. At the end of the day, the stock market is an auction. It's an alive, ongoing auction throughout the session, throughout the day, throughout the week and the months and the years. It's showing how buyers and sellers are really voting with their money. Buyers and sellers are showing up to the auction of the stock market and saying, I'm a buyer at this price or I'm a seller at this price. And in real time, we put all those together and we run this auction of the stock market. Using technical analysis, we can plot those price changes and really, at the end of the day, what we're identifying there by, by plotting those price changes, price is the most pure value for a stock, for an ETF, for any security on that day. Price is truth. It can never be restated, as we like to say. Price is truth. It is history. At that time, at that, uh, at that moment in time, at that day, on that day, at that time, uh, for whatever security you are looking at, the price that it traded at is the price that it traded at, and that is never going to change. So using technical analysis, we can put all of those prices together. We can bring in something like volume as well, and we can simply plot that. We can sort of visualize that data and that history on our screens. A lot of people think that technical analysis looks like this. It really doesn't. This is not the technical analysis that I personally like to do. And this is not the technical analysis that, uh, that most of the technicians I know like to do with crazy lines going everywhere, obscuring everything. You can't see anything on this chart. Instead, technical analysis to me is something like this. It's a very clean, simple view of what's happening in the market for a stock, for an ETF, for an industry group, for a sector, for an index, whatever you are looking at. And we can use technical analysis, of course, on other asset classes as well, commodities, bonds, cryptocurrencies now, so many different things that we can use technical analysis for. But at the end of the day, my approach to technical analysis is still a very clean, simple view. This goes back again to that pink highlighter concept, a simple, simple trend identification system. Now, I said what? That is the most important thing. I'm asking what. I'm trying to be focused on what is happening out there in the markets. And technical analysis helps me do that. Charting helps me do that. Helps me stay focused on what is happening. I'm trying not to ask why. The why is always obscure. The why is confusing. The why is subjective. But the what, the what is much, much more objective. So for me as a trader, for me as an investor, I'm trying to stay focused on the simple truth of what is happening. And I'm not concerned with why something's happening. I'll figure that out later after I've, uh, I've gotten out of the trade that's going against me or after I've gotten into the trade that's starting to set up. So why and how do I use technical analysis? Again, I use technical analysis to watch what is happening. And by watching what is happening, by charting things over time, I'm trying to remain as consistent and as unbiased as possible. Those are my goals, and charting helps me do that. Ultimately, my system comes down to trend and relative strength. I do bring in some other things like money flow and momentum, but the most important components of my system are trend and relative strength. 
Now, trend is the general direction in which something is developing or changing. Again, going back to that pink highlighter model, is it in an uptrend, is it in a downtrend, or is it moving sideways? Ultimately, with trend, the beauty of trend is that there are only three things that can be happening in any chart, in any security, in any symbol. Anything you're looking at over time, it can only be doing one of three things. It can be going up, it can be going down, or it can be going sideways. Just like I learned as that 10-year-old kid with my big pink highlighter, I'm still trying to identify those trends. I'm still trying to say, is this going up? Is this going down? Or is this going sideways? Markets, indexes, stocks, ETFs, cryptocurrencies, commodities, anything that you can chart, it all trends. And so by focusing on trend and by, again, thinking about it in those simple terms of up, down, or sideways, uh, I can really stay true to the direction of the market. And again, try to be as objective as I possibly can, try to just answer the what. Now, moving averages help me see trends. So in this chart, we have a 20 day moving average, the average price over the last 20 days. We have a 50 day moving average, average price over the last 50 days. And we have a 200 day moving average. These just help me see the direction of trend over a couple of different time frames short term, medium term, the longer term with that 200 day. That's all the moving averages are there for. It's just a complement to the price movement itself, helping me see the direction of trend over a couple of different time frames. The second component, which is the one that we're going to dive into today, is relative strength. Now, relative strength is how we really start to take this analysis to the next level. Just to read this off, relative strength is a measure of the price trend of a stock or another financial instrument, whatever you're looking at, compared to something else. And that can be another stock, that can be a different asset class, that can be an industry group or a sector. And we're simply taking the price of one asset, dividing it by another. In short, relative strength is saying, how does ABC compare to XYZ? Now, most typically, we're doing this with an individual stock or an ETF, whatever the asset we're looking at is. We're comparing that to a traditional benchmark like the S&P 500. We want to answer the question, is this outperforming the S&P 500? Is this outperforming BTI? Is this outperforming the Dow? Or is it lagging those benchmarks? Is it underperforming? That's what we're trying to answer with relative strength. We don't want to waste time trying to catch a falling knife. If we're going to beat the market, if we're going to beat VTI, again, going back to that concept from earlier in the presentation, we need to own things that are outperforming that benchmark, outperforming VTI or SPY or whatever you want to use. Ultimately, I try to invest in what's working. I don't discount leadership because I'm trying, you know, too scared to be late to the party. I don't worry about being late to the party. The party continues on a lot longer than we often think. So for me, I want to focus on what's working, focus on the true leaders that are out there in the market. Again, I've said this a couple of times now, the ultimate question that I want to ask is, is this outperforming VTI? So what we can see on this chart up at the top, this is a panel that I have on all of my charts. This is, in this case, Yeti versus VTI. We can do that on stock charts using a ratio symbol. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But in this case, what we're doing is simply comparing the price movements of Yeti to the price movements of VTI. If this line is going up, that means that Yeti is outperforming VTI. That's what we want. If this line starts to go sideways or starts to roll over and go down, we know that Yeti is beginning to underperform VTI. So in this case, over the last year, we can see that Yeti had actually, at this point in time, it's a little bit of an older chart, but at this point in time, Yeti had actually outperformed VTI by 116%. We can see that the direction of that relative strength line is up. We've got trend moving higher. We've got a really, really strong uptrend in this name. We've got relative strength moving higher as well. These are the kind of things that I want to see on charts. Now, again, just to, uh, to be clear, this is actually a chart from last year. We're going to have some, some newer charts here in just a couple of minutes. But uh, just as an example, this is the kind of thing that we like to see. We like to find stocks that are outperforming the benchmark, outperforming VTI. But we can dig a little bit deeper. That's just one panel. That's just one question that we're answering. Is this outperforming VTI? That's just one thing. Now, again, I like to, uh, to draw these little Venn diagrams. We're going to combine a couple of things here. I mentioned this right at the beginning of the presentation. We can combine top-down analysis with relative strength analysis. Top-down analysis being from the top of the market all the way down from the market to the sector, to the industry, to the individual stocks within. That is a top-down approach, starting at the big top and uh, ending up at those smaller names down within. We can combine that with a relative strength approach to build a, a very, very strong and sort of more complete, more exhaustive approach 
to relative strength. We're gonna do this using a tool on stock charts called the sector summary. So here's a quick screenshot of it, just so that you're aware of how to get to this page. If you go to stockcharts.com, you can actually click the charts and tools link in the top left corner. Look for sector summary over on the right side of this page, or if you scroll down, there's another link to it, so sort of further down. But what the sector summary tool on stock charts does is allows us to drill into the markets that top-down approach and find some relative strength along the way. So the starting place for this tool, how it looks when you first launch the sector summary, is all of the 11 sectors of the market on one page. This is what we call the sector level. So these are your traditional S&P sectors. There are 11 of those. Now you can choose any time period that you want from the menu at the top right of this page. So in my case, I like to choose one month. So in this case, what we're looking at is over the last one month, what have been the strongest sectors of the market? So over that month, we see all the, uh, the sectors here. We can see that energy has been the strongest month. This is uh, actually taken yesterday. So energy over the last month has been the strongest sector followed by utilities and then consumer staples, real estate and materials. We can, uh, we can see that the weakest sector has been communication services. Obviously it took a hit, especially with that Netflix report yesterday. But what we can do from here is drill into the strong sectors. So when we click on the name of any one of these, uh, these sector funds, we're gonna drill down to the next level within. This sector summary tool that we've built, again, allows you to drill into the market from the top down. So imagine that I'm here and I say, okay, over the last one month, energy has been really, really hot. I want to go for something that's, uh, that's not quite as overheated, maybe something like consumer staples. So imagine that I click consumer staples here. What that's going to do is take us to the next level down, which is the industry group level. The market is organized from the, the very, very top into sectors and then into industry groups and then into stocks within each of those industry groups. So when we click into consumer staples, now we're looking at all of the industry groups within that sector. Again, we keep our one month period. We can sort this by percent change. And what we see is that over the last month within that strong consumer staples sector, food products has been a very strong industry group. So again, we can click on the name there. Imagine that we click food products. We dive into the food products industry group, all the individual stocks within. And from here, we can start to pick through the different names that have been strong within that industry group. So again, we're looking at the last month and we've got a whole bunch of those. We can actually sort this page by anything that we want, including something called the scooter, which is our stock charts technical rank. All of these can then be clicked and you can actually sort of dive into those charts and start to find individual stocks that are strong within. Now think about what we've just done. We've got a market at the top. We've found our strong sector. We've clicked into that sector. We found a really strong industry group within, and then we've clicked into that industry group and we found a really strong stock within that industry group. Imagine that we click a little bit further and find some stocks that are working out of that industry group. We've lined up every single level of the market. So the standard view of relative strength, I like to say is one dimensional. When we're looking at just how is this doing relative to the S&P 500 or the VTI, that's just kind of one dimension. We can build a more complete gauge of relative strength by sort of embracing this concept of the top down relative strength approach, using that concept from that sector summary tool. So if you want to use the sector summary tool and sort of find your individual stocks by clicking into the strong sectors and the strong industry groups and down to the strong stocks within, you can do that. But we can also take this approach and actually build a charting view around it. A couple of little cheat codes here. You're going to use the price or price performance indicators for your charts on stockcharts.com. And you can use dollar sign symbol colon VTI to create a ratio symbol of the symbol on the chart versus VTI or whatever benchmark you want to use. You could swap this out for something like SPY. You're going to use dollar sign sector colon VTI to compare the sector of that stock to VTI. Dollar sign industry is going to compare the industry group of that stock to its sector. And finally, dollar sign symbol to the industry is going to compare the symbol to its industry group. Now, again, we're lining up the sector, the industry, the stock what we end up with is something like this. So this is a charting view that is, uh, is 
sort of uh, mine, if you will, what we've done is we've added these panels to our chart that actually show you the other dimensions of relative strength. In this case, we're looking at the stock versus the total market. We're looking at the sector versus the total market. We can see this is a strong sector here, our consumer staple sector. This is actually a chart that came back from that kind of sector summary sweep. So a strong sector with this outperforming the market, that line is going up. So we know this is outperforming. We've got a strong industry group here. This, uh, this industry group is actually starting to turn up. You can see food products versus its sector has been strengthening. So that line is starting to turn up. And this, in this case, we can see Anderson's uh, outperforming the industry group, that food products industry group. So again, that line turning up as well. So when we line up all of these and we see these lines starting to go up, now instead of just looking at a stock that's outperforming the market, we know that we found a stock that's out that's in a sector that's outperforming the market. It's got an industry group that's outperforming that strong sector. And in this panel down at the bottom, this stock is outperforming that industry group. When we combine that with our traditional trend analysis using the chart at the bottom, we're lining up trend and that multi-factor, multi-dimensional relative strength approach. A couple other names that came back from that uh, that little sweep of the scan of the uh, the symbol summary results. Hershey's again, a, another one that's outperforming the market, uh, a sector that's outperforming. A, a, uh, an industry group that is outperforming that sector and a stock that's outperforming that industry group. We can do this over and over again. Very, very easy to add these panels to your charts. And again, kind of bring in that multi-factor relative strength approach. So instead of just looking at the stock versus the, uh, the market, whatever one benchmark we're using, we're bringing in the sector, we're bringing in the industry group as well to kind of build a, uh, a deeper approach to relative strength. Cornerstones of this, again, don't discount leadership because you're, be, you're scared to be late to the party. Leadership lasts a lot longer than you think. When we see some of these, uh, these you know, lines start to pick up, when we see some of this sector outperformance starting, the industry group outperformance starting, and a stock that's, uh, that's starting to outperform that industry group and that sector and the market, that leadership can last a lot longer than we think. I like to say that, uh, that I expect trends to continue, not reverse. That is a cornerstone of my approach. When you see an uptrend, when you see something that is moving to the upside, expect that to continue. Don't expect that to reverse. You can always get out of things. Again, we're trying to be as consistent and unbiased as we possibly can. So as we see these lines start to roll over, that's our signal to get out. Again, we're just watching what's happening out there in the markets. We're watching these, uh, these trends continue. And when they start to fail, we can get out. We're being consistent. We're being unbiased with this approach, watching the direction of trend, watching the direction of relative strength. On the flip side, trend, relative strength, they still apply. We can look for reversing trend, fading relative strength. Those can be our signals to get out of a particular trade or investment. In this case, I've just flipped one of those charts upside down. We can see that if we see a chart looking like this, this is our sign to get out. When these lines start to roll over, that means that trend is reversing, relative strength is reversing, and that security that we're watching is starting to underperform those all important benchmarks and lose that multi-factor relative strength. So I know we covered an absolute ton. We flew through this today. I'll throw this up there. If you have any questions, if you want to reach out to me, contact me. Uh, a couple of different ways to do that. Of course, we've got my books there if you uh, want to check those out. But find me on stocktrads.com. I am always available. You can shoot our customer support team a message with any questions for me or anything like that. That always makes its way across my desk. Find me uh, at stockmarketmastery.com, a little more information there. And if you are on Twitter, you can also find me there at Grayson Rose is my Twitter handle. Always love to connect with people there on Twitter and keep in touch. So hopefully you've had some fun with me today, drilling into relative strength, drilling into some charts and some concepts from my own approach to the market. I know we covered a ton, but uh, I want to thank you all for being with us here at The Money Show on today's presentation. So I will turn it back over to Stephen and the rest of the team. Hope you all have a, uh, a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of the uh, the rest of the show. All right. Well, that was a fascinating presentation. Thank you very much. We uh, we appreciate not only your time but your insights today. Of course. Um, we'd also like to thank everybody for joining us as well. We hope you have a wonderful day.